<clears throat> All right, welcome back to the channel. Uh, no videos last week. Last week was kind of a really busy week for me. I didn't have time to edit a video. Um, so this is gonna be week three of this training phase. This is more of like a GPP phase, as you guys know. Um, today's session is gonna be similar, or it's gonna be the same as a session that we did a couple videos back. Uh, we got box jumps, snatches, clean and jerks, and front squats. Increasing a little bit of load on the snatch and the clean and jerk, which means we're gonna have a little bit more rest. So week one of this block, we were doing 90 second rest periods, uh, a little bit lighter loads. Week two, we actually dropped the rest period down to 60 seconds and did even lighter just to kind of build that uh, volume up a little bit. And then now we're gonna be doing a two minute rest on our rest periods today with a little bit heavier load. So my snatches are gonna be at just under 130 kilos and I've got sets of two to three. Clean and jerks just under 160, got sets of two to three plus one jerk. And then front squats again, just under 160. And we got sets of four to six to do on the front squats. Uh, a lot more volume on the jumping. So week one, we did, I think it was five sets of three on the box jumps. Last week, it was six or seven sets of three. This week, we're gonna be doing eight sets of three. So we're increasing the volume on the jumping as well. Today's gonna be that approach jump. I'm having three days of jumping. Uh, day one, which would be today, approach jump, so it's like a walking box jump. Day two is that deeper range of motion, so we go single leg from the kneeling position into the box jump. And then day three on the jumps is the seated box jump. So just getting the same effect from different range of motions, different joint angles um, on those jumps. So I'm gonna warm up a little bit, start jumping, and then we're gonna get after it. So I'm about to get into my warm-up sets for the snatch. Before I do that, I wanna talk about belts for a second. So the reason I wanna talk about this is because I've got a lot of questions uh, about belts, and specifically because the CrossFit semifinals in North America East just happened, and there was a lot of controversy over one of my friends, Tola Marquino, <clears throat> about wearing the breath belt during the competition, and for whatever reason, people think that this belt here, which is the breath belt, the breath belt, sorry, uh, somehow gives you an unfair advantage over people who are using a more traditional weightlifting belt. So, like the two pooch style, this one is is, a, is an Aleco belt, um, which is basically the same setup as a two pooch with in terms of how thick it is, uh, the diameter of it, everything on that. I've been using the breath belt now for about four years, and I love using this thing in training. And the reason I like doing it is because it gives me a minimal amount of support, but it allows me to work on bracing and kind of feel some sort of external pressure as I'm doing my lifts. Same thing that you would use with a traditional weightlifting belt. You strap it on, you press against the belt, and that's what that brace is. That allows you to create a little bit more intra-abdominal pressure and be able to kind of lift more or make your lifts feel stronger because you have that brace core. The breath belt does the same thing on a lesser level. Because this thing actually stretches while you're wearing it, it gives you less support than a traditional weightlifting belt. If you were to compare these two, and say which one is gonna give you more level support, this would be like wearing knee warmers. Like everyone knows like those hook grip knee sleeves that are basically just like tight cloth that goes around your knees. They don't really have a lot of thickness to them. They basically just keep your knees warm. That's what this belt is. This belt would be considered like a seven or nine millimeter knee sleeve, something that's gonna give you a lot more pressure, give you a lot more stability, 
and allow you to create more force through that abdominal region to be able to brace in a better way. A lot of people were given Tola some flack over the weekend because he wore this and because he was performing well. One, Tola's gonna perform well regardless of what belt he wears. I've known this kid for probably seven years. Back when we were doing grid in 2016, he wasn't wearing this belt. This belt didn't exist back then. He was wearing a normal belt. I've seen him touch and go power clean 350 for multiple reps back then. I've seen him do some incredible things. The dude's an athlete, regardless of what belt that he's wearing. Trust me, this belt here didn't give Tola an advantage over anybody on that competition floor. Tola's just a beast. He's got advantages over everybody because he works hard. There's a lot of controversy. I know Andrew Hiller brought it up. The way I read his post was Hiller was calling out CrossFit for continuously making a decision and going back on their decisions because Tola did get the belt clear. He went up before the competition started, showed him the belt, said, am I allowed to wear this on the competition floor? They said yes. So the CrossFit judges and the people that were running the competition told him he was good to go. So he wore it on the floor. Then people were wondering, what is he wearing? That looks like a bigger belt. They just assumed because it's bigger that it's more support and it's better than this belt here and started questioning why was he allowed to wear that and CrossFit, in standard CrossFit fashion, when they start getting questions, comments, concerns, complaints, they usually will appease the masses. So there was a lot of people who called, up, called out Tola for using that belt. CrossFit got scared and then eventually went and told Tola, you're not allowed to wear that belt anymore. So then you saw Tola and I think it was the clean workout. He had switched over to a two poop belt uh, for the rest of the competition, wasn't allowed to wear the breast belt. I use this thing all the time in training. I would never compete in it because I feel like this is a better belt for competition. So like in a weightlifting meet, if they said, hey, you could wear the breath belt if you wanted to, I would say, no, I'm gonna wear this one because this is going to give me more stability and allow me to compete at a higher level than this belt is going to. My two cents on the belts, shout out to Tola for taking that on the chin like a champ. He caught a bunch of flack, didn't care, just switched the belts out and did Tola things. Went on the floor, still crushed it. So shout out to him. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna warm up for snatches now. I've got 12 reps at 128. I'm gonna try to do these in twos and threes. Uh, first set, definitely gonna do three, and then kind of feel how it goes. Um, 128 is about 80% of my one rep max. My one rep max is 160, so I feel like threes should be doable on that. Two minute rest in between, and then we'll move on to clean jerks.
are done, clean and jerks are done. Overall, I would say it's pretty decent. Snatches felt great today, 128, the threes was good. The clean and jerks, always a little bit more difficult for me. The jerk is my limiter on that movement. Um, for whatever reason, I just suck at jerks. So the cleans felt good, jerks, I would say, probably about 75% of them. So there was probably two or three reps there that didn't feel great. That last rep, so I had nine total cleans to do. So I went two, 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 and then one. That last rep, I caught it real deep in my throat. And as I was standing there, I was like, uh, I can feel like you get that little blackout feeling where you just get a little lightheaded. Um, so I started getting that feeling there. It was just like, fuck, I just dropped the bar. Um, but overall, good, decent session. The two minute rest feels like forever compared to last week's one minute rest. So that was nice. So now I've got 18 total reps of front squat to do at 158. Um, probably gonna do these in threes and fours. We'll see as I'm warming up. I would like to do them in sixes, but I'm always a little bit more ambitious at the beginning of a session than when I start going through the session. So as the fatigue kind of builds up throughout the session, you get here and you're thinking about doing sixes and then it's like, uh, maybe not. So, I don't know, I'm gonna warm up, see how it feels. Maybe do the first set in a six and then do threes and fours after that, but we'll see how it goes. There you have it. Today's session finished. Appreciate you guys watching. Like and subscribe if you like too. I'll see you in the next one.